Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today's video is sponsored by IBM and well you might not know this but I am a time traveler and uh, yeah mostly I am traveling forward in time x1 speed <laughs> and but that doesn't mean that we can't go back in time and visit way less smart Morton which we are gonna have an opportunity right now and sponsoring today's video is IBM and their flash system 5030H which we had had to go back in time to a time where this was still in the rack so um, we have gone back a few weeks when this was still in the rack for me to tell you that IBM would like to remind you that they have this and it's available and you can get it and there's a link in the description where you can go check the prices and features and all that good stuff I did three videos on the flash system 5030H and the H stands for hybrid and the box that I got to borrow from IBM had 17 2.4 terabyte SAS spinning disk 10,000 RPMs I believe then it has these four um, SSDs which were Samsung and they were 1.92 terabyte well now that I'm back in time they still are that but in the future they will be gone and left for IBM and um, yeah thank you very much to IBM for sponsoring this video and for back in the past lending me this flash system to show to you so on to the video future modern go yeah back then we ran into some issues when we were doing a showcase for the IBM flash system FS 5030H um, one of them was my switch out there the, it has four ports that were supposedly 10 gigabits each but many people in the comments could tell me that if you use more than two of those ports it automatically switches down to one gigabit I did not know that if I had known that there would have been a workaround but I didn't know that so and the box was on its way back when I found that out so yikes other thing that we could have done was to mess around with fiber channel um, so in, in that regards <laughs> now way smarter modern has actually gotten a uh, 16 gigabit fiber channel HPA that um, next time we run into that well we can do something about it but today's video is also kind of sponsored by Barkin Hardware because they sent me this server just last week we did a video on that and today we're gonna power it on and on the interweb I found someone else that had done a tiny little video about this and uh, yeah, they, they mm, found out that it was rather noisy. So we're gonna listen into that. Not that I'm not used to noisy servers. So um, yeah, it, it has to be really noisy to actually uh, win the noise competition here. We didn't talk a whole lot about what this server was and where it fits in and everything. And people in the comments of the last video pointed out that this might not be as enterprise a server as, well, Hewlett Packard, Dell and Lenovo and those brands. And I do kind of agree with it. This server is more in the in the area where you would also find super micro servers, and there are some other brands. I would probably say that's also the not for servers but for storage. That's probably where Synology is located. So nothing bad about that. It's a different use case. I would say that this server is for the HPC high performance computing market because of the four GPUs that you can put in. I think this is very much designed to crunch numbers at a low price point. Today we are gonna put some power on it and see if I'm gonna try and install server 2019, see if we run into any issues on that, just because it's a really good operating system that will, um, well, it will go out and find drivers all by itself. And by far the most hardware is compatible with the Windows servers operating systems. But let's plug some power in here. I am actually not cheating here. I haven't had this powered on at all. I have uh, connected the screen and a keyboard and mouse, and that is it. I have not had power on this. And as it uh, might be um, power on when we put this in, let's just start. Oh, I didn't. The 
moment it's noisy. We have the first sign of life. It's an LSA Mega Rate controller in there. I wasn't expecting that. I know those. Uh, drive configuration, we could have pushed that. Uh, I had to unplug the screen and plug it back in. I don't know if the BIOS is set up for some kind of a graphics card to take over. But I'm just gonna see if they left anything on the hard drive for me. It is noisy. Oh! Oh, that is nice. So it was very slow at uh, getting to that point. Yeah, it does not have anything to boot from. Intel network, awesome. No bootable device. Yeah, I was expecting that. I have my car keys here, so uh, we're gonna boot from this USB pin, which has the the multi boot. As you know, I kind of read the comments that you post on my videos. And I got a good suggestion. Someone suggested that I should call this server for Rust Bucket uh, <laughs> because it has to rust uh, some places on it. And I thought that was very amusing. So, uh, yeah, that was a good suggestion. Rust Bucket. I came up with another one a Rack Rust or Rusty Rack. Um, I think we should try and reboot this and go into the BIOS and see what's in there. Okay, it's, it scares the hell out of you. It just ramps up all the fans and then it well, slows them down again. Let's see, run, tell it, set up. Uh, did I miss that? I missed that. We're gonna try that again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it found the controller and the hard drive. I have pressed delete to get into the BIOS. I hope that goes in there. And here we can press control H to go in and configure the rate controller. Um, let's see if the BIOS shows up. It sure takes a while. It's a real server in that regard. Ah. <laughs> okay. It knows the date. It's the 27th of December 2020. Level administrator. We have 64 gigabytes of RAM. We have CPUs. They're 2400 megahertz. And the fans are just ramping up right now. The BIOS is from back in 2016. Don't know if anything newer is available. Might have to check that. See advanced. Lots of advanced settings there. Power save. Event lock. System event lock. Oh, it's empty. Hmm, how rude. Okay, boot. Let's kill those network boots if we can do that. That's a oh, a virtual CD-ROM drive. That's nice. Okay, it might be okay. Monitor. Oh, we have all kind of good stuff here. Temperature on the CPUs. Fan speeds, <laughs> which is ramping up. Some of them are really high. These three, which I hope are the middle ones. Security, password thing key. Okay. Tools, have the flash utility. Probably shouldn't have pressed that. We can f update the bias from there. And we go back. I think we can go back. Yeah, we could. We can go out. <laughs> Okay, boot override, save changes. Okay, I'm gonna mess around with this, see if there's anything interesting and I'll let you know. Okay, I configured a little bit in here on the BMC network uh, configuration so that maybe in, at some point I can try the, uh, the management adapter in the server. People in the comments was not impressed by that, but I haven't seen it, so I kind of wanna see it at some point. Um, but other than that, I haven't done much. I found out that I can uh, I can boot from the from the Samsung Flash that is here. But I think I need to save save and reset here to do that. Yes, and then I'll have to punch something to boot from the the USB. I could have done that there, but I'm not sure that it would have saved my changes if I did that. I managed to get into a uh, boot select thing so we're gonna select the flash drive the USB flash drive that I 
put in there and see what happens. I should get my boot menu if all is good. Yeah, there we are. So here we can boot server 2019. We could uh, put some VMware on it. Might try that. Might could also put some Proxmox on it. Would also be interesting. But I want to make sure that everything works using server 2019. Let's try that one. There is a 200 gigabyte uh, hard drive in there, and I hope that it can see that. Uh, if it doesn't see it, you might have to go into the RAID controller and pass it through, or make a RAID on it. And it does not see any drives. Ah. Okay, I'll um, I'll meet you in the RAID controller. Okay, here we have the RAID controller, and it's an LSI. Uh, it's an LSI Mega Raid SAS PCI Express R O M B. I have never heard of that. So um, let's go and check what that looks like. It looks pretty normal, and as um, predicted. It has not been configured. We have one hard drive here in SAS SSD, 185 gigabyte, 200 gigabyte ish, and it's unconfigured. The wizard, add configuration, yes. Manually, yeah, that's probably the, no, that's uh, automatic. No redundancy. We only have that one drive, so no redundancy is possible. Next. And it made that. Yes. Yes. And we should. Yeah, it's making that. And it should be okay. And now we should have it here. Yeah, it has made a virtual drive for us. And it's using the hard drive. And uh, what it does is uh, the RAID controller is between the hardware and the software. So the the hardware is of course the disk and the software is the operating system so the RAID controller manages that and so in here you tell the RAID controller what to present to the operating system I could have made 10 hard drives here and each of them maybe 18 gigabytes and it will tell the system or the operating system that well we have 10 hard drives for you and the operating system wouldn't know anything different than it had 10 drives and the RAID controller will just manage that, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we're kind of done here. Advanced software options. Oh, we can do RAID 6 and RAID 5 on here. That is sweet. Exit. I'll uh, reboot and get back into uh, server 2019. There we are. We have something to install on. Awesome. Next. Let's see. Yeah. It's going to work fine. Okay, we are booting server 2019 for the first time. Uh, I had to go into the BIOS and set it up for booting from that drive. That, well, it's slow. So when you go in there and you have to go out and in a few times to, to mess with it, it's a drag. But I had to set the boot options to boot from the, the virtual drive that is now being presented. Uh, first time it it picked the uh, the USB key again. Locking in for the first time. Yes. Yeah, I plugged in the network, so yeah, that's okay. Uh, don't show it again. There we are. Let's check out the computer here. It sees everything, it sees the two CPUs. These are the E5 4657Ls. They're 2.4 GHz processors. You can see that right there. And they are 12 cores. So that means that we have 24 cores in here. And with hyper fretting, that should give us 48 cores. There we have. It's not doing anything, which is always a good thing. Right click, logical processors. And that's all the processors that we see. So there are 12 cores here. 
12 fiber threading, 12 cores, 12 fiber threading. So that's a lot of cores here and uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM. Giving the server a name here. Yes. And we have to restart. Sure, sure. Okay, I just ran a CPU benchmark. Use uh, CPU versus the world. Okay, yeah, right. It scored 17,505. That is pretty good. The CPUs themselves should score about 12,000, but combined they score 17,000. That is quite a bit lower than you would expect, but when you put in one CPU, you run at one speed. Then when you put in the next CPU, you are not guaranteed double the speed because, well, it's a bicycle. If there are two people on the same bicycle, it doesn't run twice as fast. It just, oh, yeah, you get it. Let's run the other one, Cinebench R15. Run CPU, doesn't take long. I, I have cheated, I have run it here. But I would give you the... And the fans ramp up. As it is working hard. And there we are, 2664. Awesome. There is quite an amount of stuff in here that this system hasn't found by itself. Uh, SAS controller. Yeah. yeah, I'll do some Windows updating and see if it finds some of it itself. And I haven't booted it yet, so it still have the Windows name. So maybe it will perform better afterwards. There is no guarantee for that. So the server works perfectly well. I have even managed to get the right um, screen driver in there. They weren't available at ASUS. They kind of only have um, software to server 2012 R2 and they haven't put anything newer on there. But I was able to figure out which graphics card it was and find the right driver for it. It's an A-speed something. Uh, never mind. Those two CPUs in here are really awesome. As said, these are the E5 4647L processors version 2 but they are very much equal to the e5 2695 version 2 they're more or less the same cpus 12 cores 24 threads uh, 2.4 gigahertz so and these are available at bargain hardware for about 130 pounds which is a bargain <laughs> Uh, the difference between the 2600 series and the 4600 series is that the 2600 series you can put two CPUs in a server. With the 4600 series you can put four CPUs in a server. There is also the E5 8800 series. Guess how many that is? Uh, yeah, eight CPUs. And do remember if you're going shopping over at Bargain Hardware, which I do recommend, if you use the checkout code MYPLAYHOUSE, small letters, you get 5% off of your purchase. So um, yeah, next time we're going to be upgrading this a little bit. I am hoping to find some GPUs to put in there. I have been searching on the internet for GPUs, but well, at the moment, new GPUs are just vacuumed out of the market. Everybody has bought those. There's nothing available. So as of right now, I have no idea what I will come up with. If you have any good suggestions to products that are actually available, do leave them in the comments below. And while you're down there, please give this video a like. And oh yeah, one more stupid thing. It has just been Christmas and I've got new slippers. And these are sporty slippers. And I have been laughing non-stop about sporty slippers. So yeah. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye. Oh yeah, and it's noisy. But it's available at Bargain Hardware.